Welcome to Business and Finance here on Equity Television International. We are seeing that week on week, dollar, diesel, and even PMS have been hitting new heights. And then caught. marketers are attributing this to the increase in the dollar rate. That is, we are having the Naira falling, having its free fall week on week. And we are seeing the dollar almost hitting the highest or its lowest of one thousand to a dollar and then we are seeing that marketers are saying that as long as this free fall continues we are going to see that diesel will keep going high and also pms will keep going high and high in the market and then the prediction for the premium motor spirit is it going as high at 900 naira to a liter we are already seeing marketers lamenting that the ground price that is the landing price of the premium moto spirit is going high and high and therefore it means that there could be in as much as we are having assurance that the fuel price the fuel pump price will remain where it is but marketers are lamenting that this is not sustainable and this will not last for a long period of time as not only is um the dollar value going high against the naira but we are also seeing that the crude oil price is going high per barrel where we are having crude oil per barrel at 97 dollar and this indirectly and directly is affecting diesel price and also affecting the price of the premium motor spirit as our bonnie lights and every other different types of crude oil in the country around the world rather is going high due to opec's um effort to seeing that we're now seeing that the dollar is rising and so is the crude oil price rising and so are we seeing an increase in diesel and the premium motor spirit now in as much as marketers will keep lamenting that of course they have other problems aligned as even this is affecting distribution diesel is what most of these big trucks are being used to go around with fuel in the country we are saying that that alone is also affecting distribution and also the price of the premium moto spirit but then we will wait and see and watch how things unfold concerning the prices of diesel and also the premium moto spirit at the full pump level and see how it keeps going but as long as the as long as the dollar keeps having its free fall not only in the parallel market but even in the exchange and exporter windows we will keep seeing this increase in the price now the un general assembly has come to an end but there are key points that we would like to focus on especially concerning the economic policies of the country and what our president bola ahmed Tinubu is chairing the united nation to do for africa and then to do for nigeria of course the president started with speech his speech by recognizing the president of the united nation and then all the general council and then also other world leaders europe asia and every other country and then he went on to his key speech and he started by well many other things have been said however these are key to our growth and development economically in nigeria africa entirely many proclamations have been made yet our troubles remain close at hand Failures in good governance has hindered Africa, but broken promises on fair treatment and outright exploitation from abroad have also exerted a heavy toll on our ability to progress. Now, this is the president saying that, of course, Africa has its fair share of problems. Nigeria has its fair share of problems. Yes, there is the issue of governance. There are other factors as we are seeing the coup in West Africa, that of, um, of Niger. And then he is saying that, yes, these have also damaged the growth that is happening in the country financially and also in Africa. However, we are seeing unfulfilled promises coming from across the world, exploitation, which are one of the major things that he made emphasis on that yes in africa we are seeing exploitation now he went further to say we are not asking for identical pro programs and action what we seek is an equally firm commitment to partnership we seek enhanced international cooperation with african nations to achieve the 2030 agenda and sustainable development goals now he said we are not act asking for identical programs and actions of course we can ask the world to treat, to deal with us like how it's 
dealing with Europe, how is it dealing with Asia, how is it dealing with North America or South America as we all have various and special needs in this part of the world. However, we are wanting fairness and some equal commitment to partnership. He went further to also say, we welcome partnership with those who do not mind seeing Nigeria and Africa assume larger roles in the global community. Yes, we want to partner with countries and world powers that would not look down upon Nigeria, but would see us as we are. And we also want us to grow to the level of global competition and to be recognized in the global community. Yes, we might be having a lot of issues concerning loans, debt, and all of that, which are the key things he um, addressed in his speech. However, we want partners that will come and see us for who we are and will want us to thrive in the global community. Now, he said also the question is not whether Nigeria is open for business. The question is how much of the world is truly open to doing business with Nigeria and Africa in an equal, mutually beneficial manner. He's looking for direct investment in critical industries, opening their ports to a wider range and larger quantity of African exports and meaningful debt relief are important aspect of the of cooperation we seek. That is, if this world economy is coming in to give us our debt relief, we should see a significant amount. We should see a figure that we can say, yes, we are starting on a, clean, on, a, on a clean slate. We can say we are starting on a level that, yes, debt is no longer an issue. As the president is deliberately giving his effort to see that Nigeria is not a boring spree. However, we cannot neglect the fact that we have a debt profile that is high and we have years and years to go before we are able to clear this debt. Therefore, if we are having the United Nations General Council coming into step to give debt relief to Africa and Nigeria, we want something significant. And also the question about is not whether we are open for business, but who is ready to do business with us in a mutually beneficial manner and whether we like it or not some of the things that are threatening us in the country is illegal mining and we have a lot of foreign investors coming in this country and exploiting the mineral solid mineral field in the country we have a lot of illegal mining going on a problem that we have the ministry facing and trying to curtail and see that is no longer a problem we have foreign countries coming in and taking we if we will go further to talk about crude oil tap we have buyers and these are coming from the international community so yes we are looking for a mutual beneficial manner when you come in not with expectation and also he talks about policies that are stopping the growth policies that of course may be acceptable in Europe, may be accepted in America, but such policies, we are not accepting them here because they will not help the growth in the country. These are all the things that the president addressed the general council saying that this is what Africa and Nigeria need. And we are waiting to see the response of world leaders and world powers if they will truly step in and be able to trade with us, open their border to more of our products, be able to come to us and build a community that will complete globally, not exploiting us and not being extreme in the way they go about exploiting us in the country, but then giving us a fair ground where we can thrive as Nigeria as a country. We have seen that oil uh, oil marketers are having oil distributors as a problem, as I earlier mentioned, that there are so many factors in place. And of course, one of which is the increase in the price of diesel, also the fuel pump price. This is the major um, reason behind the, the lamenting coming from the marketers as these prices are also affecting the distribution of oil in the country. Now we are seeing not only manufacturers are going through problems, not only small, medium enterprises are going through this, not only households are going through the hardship, not just workers, not just farmers and um, individuals and small business owners. We are seeing that even the people that are saddled with the responsibility of distributing gas to the country, we're talking about diesel, liquid gas, and also the premium motor spirit are lamenting that the high prices in these products are also affecting the distribution of these goods in the country. Now we're seeing that amidst all the oil chaos and scarcity, the high price, 
we are seeing that Dangote refinery is going to begin operation in October. Now, it is not starting with PMS, but it is starting with jet fuel and then diesel. The um, refining for Premier Motors P will start in November. And then he says um, um, NMPC does not have needed crude oil immediately. Now, we are going to talk about this briefly and we are, we are going to break it down. But then we are seeing that the company is going to buy fixed stocks in dollars. However, the long awaited 650 thousand barrels per day down quite refinery will receive the first cargo of crude oil in the next week and will begin producing up to 370,000 barrels per day of diesel and jet fuel from October. This is coming from the company's management. Right now, I am ready to receive crude oil, said Edwin, who is the president and CEO of the Donkote refinery, um, in his who previously ran the um, cement company. We are just waiting for the first vessel, and so and so as soon as it comes in, we can start. He added. Now he went further to say the plans that Donkote refinery have for Nigeria and Africa, that is the largest producer of refined oil, jet fuel, diesel, and also the PMS. Now you wonder why is Dangote refinery importing um, crude oil when it is in the land where crude oil is being harvested i'll put it that way now the reason is the simple reason is that we are having the nnpcl swapping oil for loans if you can't remember we took a three billion dollar loan from the african bank and this loan swap is for oil so we are getting three billion for for many other things and then we are swapping crude oil so as it stands now nigeria and npcl don't have crude oil to give to dangote and dangote have to import crude oil in dollars into the country so we are not looking at trading with naira but with dollar and that's why we are seeing company to buy fit stock in dollars and i know these are raising questions but this is the major reason now to address the liquidity crisis the NNPCL has restored to borrowing from various sources, including local and foreign banks, suffering wealth bonds, and multilateral institutions. One of its recent deals is a $3 billion crude oil um, for loan agreement with Afrizin Bank, a pan African trade finance institution. The deal was signed in August 2023 and allows the NNPCL to use its future oil production as collateral for the loan. The loan will be repaid over five years with an interest rate of LIBOR plus 6%. The loan will be used to settle some of the NNPCL's outstanding debt and funds its capital expenditure project. Now, no wonder we are saying that NNPCL is not able to provide crude oil to Dangote refinery. As already, we are not meeting our quota by OPEC. We are still below 1.1 million barrels per day and we haven't met for a very long time, 1.8. Um, despite other oil producing country cutting it down so that the price will go high. Now, this is where Nigeria needs to take the advantage of increasing the oil production and exportation of crude oil because we are seeing the crude oil per barrel is going to as high as 97 and I believe the number will go high above $100 very soon. Now, if our production or supply is low, then it means we are not benefiting from the increase of crude oil. We are only left to face the problem of the premium motor spirit pump price going high and then also diesel price going high because we are at the mercy of importing this refined oil and we are also seeing that Dangote is importing crude oil which means that perhaps if the NMPOC doesn't step up to their game of providing crude oil to Dangote refinery we might still see crude oil coming out from Dangote refinery as high as even the fuel being imported into the country now we are losing money to illicit inflows in the country illicit financial flows rather the country this is coming from the attorney general of the federation and the minister of justice he's saying that you know what the estimated average is one um two eighteen billion dollar annually to illicit financial inflows he said this could largely be prevented with negotiation drafting transparency and prioritize zeal adding that the revised guidelines will deter corruption in the negotiation and execution of government contracts now what are the um, illicit financial flows that are eating the billions of dollars in nigeria 
and one of course is terrorist financing whether we like it or not for decades now we are having the issue of terrorism in the country and we know that terrorism is being financed inwardly in internally or externally terrorism is being financed in the country and we remember the probe some months back where we have been asking the dss to put out the name of those um, financing terrorism in the country we are yet to see we are yet to hear or see about those lists and who are the people involved in financing terrorism however this is it is sort of the money that should be used to finance all the sectors in the country that will bring growth education agriculture technology uh, medicine and all of that we are seeing this money going into terrorism and no wonder we are losing billions of dollars into the things that will not bring growth in the country we're talking about corruption missing funds embezzlement fronts hardening where we saw whistleblowing and how much money it brought out from um from from hidden places these are all things and smuggling we're talking about different types of smuggling we can see many times where custom have to destroy goods that have been illegally smuggled into the country and not only are we having facing this problem with products that are coming into the country but there is a lot of illegal smuggling of things outside the country and when these goods have to be damaged or when the custom cannot account for such then it means that of course the revenue that is supposed to be generated from these goods or products will not be and also we are seeing that the FIRs are also having struggle with small businesses and even large scale businesses concerning tax because they are not registered by the right authority or the right organization and therefore we cannot account for all of these businesses and therefore we have well established businesses even small businesses that are supposed to be paying their taxes, evading this tax, and therefore we are losing billions. We see number of times where we have tax force going around, closing down shops, businesses, and making sure they pay their tax, but alongside with corruption, we are not being able to generate enough revenue when it comes to tax and these are and just as the attorney general of the federation clearly said that transparency negotiation drafting is one of the major ways to go about this because whether we like it or not when we have a transparent system then there won't be room for corruption there won't be room for um evading of tax there won't be smuggling everything will move um freely and clearly and even concerning negotiating perhaps when it comes to terrorism we can see that play a vital role now coming from Dele Alake the Minister of Solid Minerals saying that we have enough deposits that we can find ourselves on global demand now he's talking about 700 billion dollar worth of solid mineral deposit he said that Nigeria's mineral resources make it one of the top 10 players in the energy sector, which is true. We can see, we can agree to that. Now, Alaki said this is at a special session at the sidelines of the ongoing. Now, not ongoing, no longer going, but this was said at the UN General Assembly in one of the sessions. He is trying to woo investors to come into the country and see that we have enough deposit that we can be able to play a role, a role in global demand. Now, the minister stated Nigeria's readiness to play an important role in, the, in meeting the global demand for critical minerals he kept saying things like nigeria has always occupied a special position in global energy discourse nigeria played a vital role as a key oil exporter during the era of hydrocarbon and became top 10 exporter of oil as the phase of global energy changes nigeria once again emerges as a key supplier of gas which we know is an important energy transition fuel today he talked about last year in the midst of the russia ukraine crisis nigeria was one of the top exporters of the energy that is liquid gas to europe and was the sixth largest NLG global exporter that is of 2022 and we'll wait to see what is the report for the year 2023 but of course we are still leading we are still at the forefront and so much can be done concerning the liquid gas solid minerals he said other critical um, minerals and we know zinc for sure one of which is being used to make a lot of other pharmaceuticals much the drugs we consume the makeup we use a lot of things that we consume in the country we have 
have a lot of these solid mineral deposits in, in many states in the country. And of course, the minister is not wrong if he says that we can compete in the global market and we can meet the demand because our deposit is full and is running in billions of dollars. Now, alongside other materials and ingredients for production in the country, we are seeing that the country is losing trillions and trillions of money in pharmaceutical ingredients. We're talking about APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients, and we are importing them. Now, we see for each of the drugs imported into the country, it's at least 50% of potential active ingredients, idling somewhere close by. Now, but the alternative to importing drugs or IPIs for local manufacturing comes at the huge cost that is now too heavy for the affordability of Nigerians and Nigeria. Available data shows that Nigeria loses more than $1 billion, which is exactly there about $1 trillion, now yearly importing the same from India and china now we are seeing that amid the forest liquidity crisis an exchange rate of a thousand naira, which that is at the parallel market to the u.s dollar the cost of drugs has spiked we are seeing over 150 percent increase in the price of drugs medicine in the country so far now finding shows that some of the drugs are fast getting out of stock or becoming unaffordable. Now, I want to use paracetamol as a case study here. We are looking at the active um, pharmaceutical ingredient for paracetamol. Now, we see paracetamol may, may be made by acetylation of paraamonophenol. Now, obtained by reduction of paranitrophenol with acetic acid of acetic anhydride, a number of other synthetic roots have been described. Now, this is me going into a little bit of science, but I will still break it down. Now, paraaminophenol, which is from phenol, the question is, where is phenol gotten from? And we would think this sounds very big and huge and gigantic. And where are we getting these acids from? And how do we synthesize them? And then we have the phenolics, a widespread constituents of plant fruits. We're talking about fruits, vegetables, cereals, olive oil, legumes. We're talking about chocolate and beverages. We're talking about tea, coffee, beer, wine and partially responsible for the overall organoleptic properties of plant foods. Now we can see that, of course, Nigeria have a lot of fruits. We have a lot of vegetables. We have a lot of legumes. We have olive. We make olive oil. We have coffee. We have legumes. We have tea. We have a numbers of beverages, like a lot, a lot, a lot, which it means that we can, of course, make phenol in this country, which from phenol, we can get paraaminophenol. And from that, we take on to the next synth um, synthesized level and we can be having our paracetamol product in the country. And we know that the consumption of paracetamol as a pain reliever is high in the country. And we have these materials to extract these raw materials, this nitrate from the four paracetamol in this country is just left for us. And who is in charge to research and start making this production? Because the countries that are synthesizing this and of course making tons of money from Nigeria is Argentina, Brazil, China, Colombia, France. The Federal Republic of Germany, India, Japan, Mexico, Poland, Republic of Korea, and Romania, Taiwan, Turkey, the UK, and the USA. And I believe that Nigeria can join the list because we have everything it takes to make what? To get what? To make phenol out of all of these materials. And then instead of importing these active materials, we will have them and perhaps we'll wake up to a day where we have the active materials to make paracetamol in the country. Now we are having the MPC meeting be postponed. Despite being there, we're no longer having an acting um, CBN governor, but now we have a new um, CBN governor, we are having uh, Cardoso, but however, we are seeing that the MPC meeting has been postponed. 
although there are so many reasons but we are still left to speculate why is it not holding yet as we know that it is important for this meeting to hold as so many policies need to be reviewed and we also need to know what will be the NPR the monetary policy rate which is the last time we saw it it was at its high of over 18 percent now what will be the next NPR for the country so that the Business owners will know their fate, um, marketers will know their fate, manufacturers will know their fate, uh, even those importing, exporting petroleum will know their fate, and then the entire country will know their fate, whether we will keep seeing an increase in the cost of production or we will be seeing a uh, normalized price of goods in the market or things are about to change but then of course Nigerians are expecting and are waiting to see what are the new reforms that the CBN president is going to bring to the table what are the economic review we will see as some of the policies have not been favorable to the economy as it is I am Rachel Tanze thank you for keeping a date with me on business and finance see you next time